just takes us a second to get from our um it just takes us a second to get from our uh our podcasting setup over into our uh streaming setup. streaming setup so we always have to take a quick break one to kind of refresh ourselves too because uh you know you got to be able to get everything ready Aw, uh, you don't want to be naked anymore? I'm well, no, down. we're going to be climbing a mountain. <laughs> so the plan for today, um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting our... Um, we're going to be, first of all, clearing the tower at the top of here because I need this. We just want to get the map um, over here. And then we're going to be heading over to the Rito, and we're going to be starting some sage quests. You know, because we keep traveling, and Jake keeps complaining about not having Tulin to help him glide. Tulin, and then also, I might do this on my own, but at some point I want to do a playthrough where you get Minoru first. That would be an interesting playthrough where you get Minoru first because I know it's against the story. Like, Minoru is supposed to be last. That's just it. As far as the story, when you meet Minoru, she says that you were supposed to find her first. Okay. You should have a second... I think you should have a second. Uh, yeah, the helmet. You gotta wear the big dumb helmet, guys. Uh, oh yeah, we got that from uh, Amiibo. Yeah, we've got the big dumb helmet <laughs> to get us up the mountain. We're hoping to avoid the Lizalfas just because I don't want to pick a fight and burn some equipment because we've got some. We've got some good equipment on us. We've got oh, royal we can guard burn the iron. Now. We can uh, burn the sledge. We've also got a piece of equipment to deal with the Lionels as well. So we're we're ready for a fight. I just don't want to fight I'll, because I'm going to be probably doing enough fighting when we're in uh we're in the ice realm. Eh, I know because we've got to get up there, and so I know it's not too much fighting, but we'll have to do a little bit. Of course, as always, we are in chat. Uh, we love talking with you guys. We usually get some wild conversations going. Yeah. Sometimes about food. It's not like... Actually, I'm still feeling kind of full from that uh, breakfast. I liked my scone. You always <laughs> like your scone, though. Hey, I only get scones <laughs> once a week. <laughs> you can always cook a scone. Scones are not hard. Yeah, but I don't know what to do with the oil. Well, you can reuse the oil. Um. Cheesing our way up to the mountain. Wow. Don't want to talk to the goddess statue. I need the tower. We're not here for the goddess statue. Although we might be able to grab the gut. Talk to the goddess statue to get our... Uh... Do we need to take the top off of this one? so that looks like there's an issue where the top is uh i don't remember still on well let's try to take it off just in case no oh. it'll open i just don't remember what the problem with this one was was it just the hike up there was cold and hard to get to yep the hike up here was difficult no yep oh you're like no no we're early there's a difference. You know, we, we're going to start at 11, and then we're like, wow, that took us way less time, and we're actually really excited to get into the game today. So, yeah, you're not late. We're early. <laughs> <laughs> by about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, by about 10 minutes. I don't know why we're so early today. Um, we're still going to run for the same amount of time we usually do. Legitimately, all you've, pretty much all you've missed is us going to the tower. <laughs> yeah, I, I've just climbed a mountain. That's it. All we did was I... Uh, I and we talked about scones. And talked about scones, yeah. <laughs> the, the scone conversation has begun. Um, it's not going to maintain, you know. I told Jake talked about how he uh, he enjoyed his scone. You know, we, we shouldn't have too many food discussions today unless that's something we really want because uh, we're not feeling hungry yet. Not until later. That That discussion's later. Yeah, that discussion comes later. Sorry, I'm getting our uh, chroma key corrected. There we go. Um, that discussion always comes later. Um, for now, we're kind of starting, you know, 
Can can we talk to uh, wait? Does the champion tunic have chainmail? It's got leather. I know it has leather. It's the champion's leathers. I know it's the champion le champion's leathers, but is that chainmail? I think it does. Uh, down at the bottom, that looks like chainmail. Only good scones are the ones with cheese. Are you uh, sorry? We are. We were discussing American scones. We put honey butter on ours. <laughs> 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 well, I think scones over. over uh, I, I think, if I'm re remembering correctly from the UK, um, scones are your guys' scones are similar to our biscuits. I don't know. I mean, like our scones are fried dough. Our fried uh, bread dough, or yeah. roll dough. Yeah. I I always like them with. Uh, yeah, so, like, and, and nowhere ever makes scones, and it's disappointing because I'm like, scones are so easy. If you have bread dough, which isn't hard, you can just stick it in a fryer. Of course they're fried. <laughs> of course they're fried. It's not a scone if it's not fried. Uh, <laughs> I think he would beg to differ. Scones are fried. They're actually one of the better fried foods. They've got a nice, pleasant flavor to them. Said no one ever. Honestly, I, I I have nothing against your guys' scones, but... Got a trick for you on this one. Uh-oh. Off to the side, there's a sled. Fuse it to your shield. Off to one of the sides, there's a sled. Fuse it to, one of your shield, to your shield. Or, actually, that is a shield. That itself is a shield. So where's the sled? No, like, the sled has a shield attached to it. It's a sled shield. Oh, but we've got good shields. Right? We'll ditch the night shield. Um, yeah, so our fried scones, like, you usually serve them with honey butter or with honey. But they're not... They're, they're bad for you. They're definitely bad for you. I will not dispute that. Like, but it's an American food, so of course it's fried. I mean, you might want to use your... Yeah. <laughs> But, I mean, that that's most American food anyways. Yeah. If it's good for you, it probably isn't American. Well, even our healthy stuff isn't really good for you. <laughs> even our health... Well, that's just because portion sizes are... And, our, like, everything we put in the foods. Like, even our salads are unhealthy somehow. Because most of them use iceberg lettuce, which doesn't have, like... Which doesn't have any, um... Any nutritional value. So we're like, yeah, no. Jake likes the scone in place of like, um, usually in place of like a uh, a pancake that they serve with it. Or, I mean, they do serve toast with it, which. I'm honestly surprised you didn't get frozen. How I, did you not get frozen with that I, one? I dodged, Jake. <laughs> did you not see me hopping around like a madman? Oh, fire fruit at him. Does that work? Yeah. Poof. <laughs> that should not work. Y'all just hate nutrients over there. Yeah, we're we're all <laughs> we're all silently like dying of malnutrition. I thought it was obesity. <laughs> that that goes into malnutrition. But it's getting better. Um other than the fact that apparently, like, like even exercising has become political in the U.S. Right? <laughs> it's really dumb. The politics in the U.S. are so dumb. <laughs> They're a joke. Man, zero to politics in nine minutes. Hey, I just got to say, at least we can provide entertainment for the rest of the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all we have on the on the politics. We think our politics are stupid. Um, we think all politics are stupid. All right, it's one of these ones. Oh, I know how I beat this. I remember how I beat this one. I had to get to the top first. I only went to the top first because if one of them spots you, they alert the others. Yeah. 
The good news is you can go back to hiding from them. Yeah, but then they investigate. Ooh, he hasn't alerted yet. No, he hasn't. <laughs> kind of are just a souped up game show to everyone else. It truly is. It is just a big game show. I guess I, I like somebody else has seen you. Oh, I fused it to the shield. Use the send. Yeah, it is just a big game show. Um, it's a whole lot of, it's a fun game show. Other than, you know, the winner gets uh, nuclear weapons. Yeah, not the best way of doing things. Yeah, it's a big game show, but the winner gets nuclear weapons. So, you know. Ascend. That's how I got to the top, is I just ascended all the way to the top, avoided them, and then worked my way down. down. And also, no matter who wins our politics, we know the real losers are everyone else in the world. So at least some of us have some, uh, uh, some ability to reflect on ourselves and be like, no, our politics are exactly as dumb as you guys think they are. Yeah. I don't have a weapon equipped. I mean, what else? It's going. Okay. I mean, if they don't just give them all to Israel, then I guess. Yeah. Um, we're not going to get further into that discussion just because uh, there's too much going on. You know, now there are protests in the U.S. Yeah. And I'd rather not get uh, pipe bombed by either side. <laughs> right? Because both sides are more than willing to commit violence. And so it's like, yeah, both sides are willing to commit violence. Um, well, you, you don't want to tick off either side, but usually by not ticking off either side, you tick off both sides. Well, that's the problem. Is with the U.S. is one side absolutely hates guns. The other side has half the weapons in the U.S. Half the guns in the U.S. Just the U.S.? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, our politics are stupid. Let's, let's get off this subject before we get too deep and can't backtrack. Right. Because, yeah, at some point you get too deep in the political discussion where everyone's ticked off. Everyone... Uh, hates each other and you're like, oh, well, we're too deep now. There's no there's no going back. Um, back to Zelda. Yeah, the, did anybody else notice that the uh, champion's tunic actually has armor? It has chainmail. Am I supposed to fuse these to my shield? Technically, but... I mean... I just picked it up and smacked people with it. <laughs> Mainly because that is a flame emitter. Ooh, that is a flame emitter. This is one of those. Standing too close to him, he can't get a hit on you. Stand so close, you can't get a hit. Uh, your weapon broke. I've got another one. Now it's on, on fire. fire. It still behaves like a torch. Are you kidding me? Apparently. I didn't know that. Huh. I didn't know it still behaves like a torch. Oh, there's an electric arrow. Why did that not go off? The rocket didn't go off. He shot it. I know. The rocket should have gone off. But yeah, so back to scones, I guess. I think that was the last bit of conversation we were on. Hey, we were also on uh, the Twilight Princess armor. Yeah, earlier. how to make how to make armor, how to make these goofy uh, things look more practical. I think Twilight Princess and Breath of the Wild does it well. Yeah, the champions. What is this? 
No. Yeah, this is the champion's leather. The champion's leathers, like. I didn't notice there was chain mail underneath. Neither did I. Like, but uh, having the leather straps and everything for you to actually hook stuff to makes sense. It's more, more for adventure. He is kind of like Frodo. Has the chainmail under the armor, which chainmail. I'm trying to think of how useful chainmail. Well, crossbows don't exist yet. Who says? I haven't seen a crossbow. Have this you? is Tears of the Kingdom. We can build anything. Well, no, no. What, what I'm saying <laughs> is like enemies don't use crossbows, which means chainmail might need might be all you need. It's interesting that they show plate and chainmail, like full plate and chainmail. So. Link is supposed to be a knight, and yet he wears just chainmail. But that's just it. You can pick up the knight's armor. You can also pick up the royal guard's armor. Because actually, he's not necessarily supposed to be a knight. He's supposed to be a royal guard. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, Hylians are elves. You, you mentioned this as we were going off on our tangent in uh, Fallout. Yeah. Uh, just elves, they just suck. You know, they don't get good magic. They don't get the long lifespans. Now, my question is... Where's my Hylian buff? <laughs> well, my question is, is when it comes to elves, are their prison sentences uh, longer? They would have to be. <laughs> so, like, when, when you get in some serious trouble and it's pretty much a life sentence, is it, like, 900 years? Yeah, <laughs> because a prison sentence for, like, an elf or a dwarf... A, a human prison sentence of like 80 years, you're like, oh, I gotta spend 80 years? See you guys right. in 80 years. <laughs> right? 80 years, I'll be out, out. I'll still look the same. 80 years is 80 years. It's, it's... I think what covers that really well is Freerun. If, if, I know most, some people are not anime watchers, but we are here. We're, we're, well, I am. Um, Freerun, Biz. Uh, Beyond Journey's End does it so well of like the age difference between elves and men. Oh yeah, uh, I mean, I always think about it because you most elves when they master a uh, trade, they spend like two hundred years mastering it. So, does that make them... Yeah, like, humans to elves are, like, apprentices would be our masters. We're like, we have 80 years to master something, and elf spends probably 40 years in an apprenticeship. I mean, yeah, you could design race-specific life sentences, you know, but how do you, how do you justify a non... Uh, a non-death sentence for a race that can practically live forever. Right. If, if the race doesn't have... Wow, I am screwing up our capture card. Not our capture card, but our chroma key. Um, a race that does not necessarily have a um, maximum, maximum age, I don't think a life sentence works for. Like, honestly, it, it has to be a capital sentence. Because otherwise, you're literally just imprisoning somebody forever. And we've seen what happens when you parallax something. They get angry. Thanos is controlling my chroma key. Yeah, he's trying to snap us out of existence. <laughs> Thanos is trying to snap us out of existence. He fears our power. Like I said, you need to put lights in the top corners on the, or just like an LED strip that covered that can, or actually put a light up there, so, by our green screen so that it's lit back. Well, that's the that's just it. Well, you're not seeing the. This is hard because I did lighting for, a, for several years, so I really know, how backlight works and, how to properly light somebody's face. <laughs> So when you put a light just straight behind somebody, it can actually cast a shadow across the front of your face. Okay. So, Jake, you want to come in and do lighting sometime? <laughs> Sorry, I'm still trying to get our uh, 
our chroma key working? And I'm on our way to say hi to Tulin. Okay, that's that that's better. It's not the best, but it will. Yeah. I so why? <laughs> Why don't you just flick the switch on? So the switch is on. Our lights are on. Um, there's just no light bulb in this top light. <laughs> so at least the one directly behind us. Yeah. There's no light there. We we could honestly probably move one of the lights over, like like the light that we have up in this corner. We can move it over here. Until then, I mean, Thanos is trying to snap my uh, my. Uh, my boom mic, my boom, at a, but he's not succeeding, you know. He'll never succeed in that. Why is it snowy here? Did the weather get worse for the Rito? Yeah. That's pretty much entirely what this... Oh, yeah, that reminds me. Is there, like, a sword on top or something? So isn't there supposed to be a shrine around here? Uh... Oh, I was going to that, and I forgot. Yeah, to I don't think it. you're gonna make it. I'm gonna make it, just barely. <laughs> the problem is, is what you're supposed to do is go do Hudson's quest, so you can have him come over here and fix the bridge, oh, or throw a pine cone on the fire, or just glide from that shrine that I forgot to grab. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. <laughs> We can go grab the one in Rito Village. Okay, sure. Because there's one somewhere really in Rito Village, and I'm not trying to remember where, exactly where it's at, but... Yeah. What? Why'd you... Because I thought there'd be fish. Yeah. Yeah. There's supposed to be fish. After it warms up, or is it the next pond up? Because this is the first one. It could be the next one up. Yeah. So the uh, getting everything fixed for this, but yeah, back to the armor. Like you, you've got to oh, make. I'm these wearing the glide armor now. E well, overall armor. Like even Link's like normal things. Like honestly. So much of these, like, tunics, like Tunic of the Wild and all of that, would be so much better if they just threw some, cha like, did some chain mail underneath. Then at least it seems functional. Like, we need functional armor. That's the big thing. Armor should be functional, not decorative. If you're using decorative armor and you're fighting, you have your own problems. Uh, in that you're using decorative armor. Ha. ha! Yeah, it's too cold for him. Boo. Ooh. Listen, guys. They were going for aesthetics, you know, bringing... But at this stage, like, I'm glad that they've started introducing things like that where they've got chain. Just the small then, details. And then it looks like a full jerkin underneath. Right? Like, that looks like a jerkin. So they... Not a jerkin, sorry. You've got the tunic, you've got the under one, which looks like a, like a, a coat of some kind, something warm. Which, honestly, I don't agree with. I don't think you should put something warm in the armor. <coughs> under the armor, because, good lord, putting something warm under all that armor. That depends on where you're at, though. That does depend on where you're at. And their armor has always looked good. But you can make anything look good. Um, I mean, the simple tunic design with the chain mail underneath and the, uh, and I would have liked more, like, of a tan under, just an under, uh, shirt, tan undershirt kind of thing, instead of this. I love this ethereal rendition of the Rito 
so for the wet for the cold weather um, there should be a shrine on this main island uh it should be on the bottom it, i think it's directly beneath the store What's it? let's get to the store i guess there it is <laughs> Yeah, this rendition of the music, though, it's beautiful. Like, they did, they went hard with the music in these games. I honestly like that it, the this, for the retail, it takes you back to uh, Wind Waker. Well, they, they always did that. Like, they're trying oh. to um, ride the wind, boys. We ride the wind. Whee! Mission Impossible. Probably stole the theme from a random remix they found on Spotify. <laughs> um, do Nintendo steal their music like that? I'm not sure if Nintendo steal their music like that. Or if they actually do the work. Like, I would believe it if they stole it. But at the same time, I'm like, Nintendo's been pretty good, as far as I know, about not stealing music. Yeah, they've been, as far as I know, they've been pretty good about not stealing music, so. Or not, not utilizing music that doesn't technically already belong to them. Or getting permission, so I'm not sure about that. Like, when you talk about, like, stealing of creative works, you know, oh, uh, Wizards of the Coast, Mr. Guilty over there. Like, they're practically thieves. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's just a remix. Um, yeah, Nintendo's pretty good about, like, keeping their games an art form, essentially. Oh, yeah. And the integrity of that art. I mean, they're not usually after the massive amount of money that other companies are, because if they did, there's so much they could be doing right now with their, their products. Also, where is my Legend of Zelda war game? What are you going to do? Bokoblins versus... Yes. <laughs> Hylians? Hylians, Bokoblins, Moblins, the undead. Where is my Legend of Zelda war game? And then you've got the Zora. The that would actually be really cool. All right. I want the concept art on my desk by Monday. You think I can design stuff that easily? No, you can't design anything. Honestly... <laughs> I really want to know how a lot of these groups set up their 3D models based off of legitimate video game figures. Do they use the... Uh, a lot of them you can go into the files of the game and rip the 3D image yeah. and then probably run it run it through. Here, just you take over. I'm doing research. I want to do some research. I want to see if there ever That's was like... Like a try at a Legend of Zelda war game. Uh, there was several Zelda games that were uh, scrapped. Um, heck, there was actually supposed to be a Wind Waker 2, and that got scrapped. Yeah. Like, honestly, it would be so cool if they did. Never existed. There's STL files everywhere. See, where do you get the... I want to know how to make those files. Like I said, you probably rip it from the game files and then um, throw it into a 3D render. Because it's the same with, like, the armors. On Reddit, it looks like four years ago they've been there's somebody talking about a uh, war games. Is there a huge, um, huge, like, cry for this? I would love for there to be that. Um, yeah, you could literally just do the factions, you know, Zora, Rito, or do cross faction. 
and just do like um essentially uh heroes and villains right and then have essentially sub factions you know the the rito work best with the rito the uh hylians kind of work with everybody uh the hylians work with, well with everybody maybe they don't have the strongest the strongest specialized units other than link um and zelda or or the hylians the hylians are focused on their heroes Link, Zelda. Link, Zelda, um, the king, you know, and then each faction, you know, Rito's, Rito's are, can, are mobile, very mobile characters. Um, they have fly keywords to get over terrain. Uh, Rito have special abilities about swimming, which means you could imp implement some kind of water system. Like maybe, maybe just like little, little like throw ons well, that you put on the table. Like, that's in like this, this is the water. Well, like in this, in this game, uh, Zora weapons, when you're wet, deal additional damage. Yeah. It doesn't mean you have to be swimming. It, you just have to be. No, wet. Zora would be healers. Huh. Supports, support units. They'd have very strong support units that's just because of and Mipha. very strong <sighs> melee units. That's just because of Mifa. Well, no, they they they've it's supported that they've got healing magic. Not just from Mifa, but overall they have healing magic. So like their their faction their units are very strong into heavy melee and heavy um, support. Whether that by give, be by giving cover through water in some way, or by um, or by healing units, and then of course you'd have the Gerudo. Which would just be strong fighters. They'd have to be very strong fighters. Um, they'd have to be very durable. So they'd be your tanky kind of units. You know what I laugh about with the Gerudo? Hmm. I mean, I know that this game is not... What race would win? Um, that's the thing. So in a fight between them all, if they were all to pick a fight, um, I don't know. Honestly, all you got to do is I, I, the Drew to annihilate the Rita. Lightning strikes. Yeah. Um, but not all of them have. Yeah, so lightning strikes, lightning, the various kinds of magic that it's been showing that uh, the Drew to have. You know, you've got the sisters um, from. You've got the sisters from Ocarina of Time. You've got the Demon King, Ganon. Ganondorf from any Zelda game. And he's usually Gerudo. So definitely that would be like your infantry, your heavy infantry. And then um, Rito. So the Rito, I think, uh, honestly, if you're put putting them all in a fight, um, I do think ultimately it's the Gerudo that come out on top. Because they completely annihilate the Rito and the Zora. That's just it. The Zora, I mean, the Zora could wait everybody else out. Not until they start zapping the water. Yeah, they're winning 100%. Because Rito and Zora, they zap the water. They zap the water and they just start calling it lightning. Um, for Hylians, you know, they're strong fighters. They're, they tower over Hylians, so they've got a size difference. Unlike Hylians, which, per, which favors swords for some reason, for some stupid reason, the Gerudo have it right and favors spears and polearms. Hey, the... The Hylians use spear and polearms. Not as often, though. Most, most okay. uh, people that I, I see right now. are bearing swords. So I'm like, okay, most, be, because the Hylians are bearing swords, they lose because of the pole arms. The ones that use pole arms do even the fight, but Gerudo have a significantly longer reach. So should I go for the quest or the tower? I think the only people, go for the tower. Um, the only people that the Gerudo have an issue beating are the, uh, are the um, Gorons. Honestly, the Gorons would be a really difficult for everybody. 
The Gorons are difficult to deal with. The good thing is they don't really favor... Um, they favor slow weaponry. Um, I don't know how... How they fare against... Like, because of their rock. It's so hard to fight them. But they're also not warriors. Oh, I know. But their defenses... The defenses that they have are... Yeah, I think the Guru do manage to overcome that. I think it's a more fair fight between the Gerudu and the um, well, Gorons. The, not only that, but the Gorons, they learn to use themselves as a weapon. Yeah. To the point where you can launch them as a cannonball. But that that's the rare Goron. That's not every Goron. Um, and Gorons don't... Gorons are not a warrior group like the Gerudu are. Um, Gerudu up against Hylians, I think the issue is um, their spell... Yeah, slow, lack of skill. You know, they got to come down the mountains in. All you got to do is get on top of a hill and you lose to the Gorons because they'll never bring up enough momentum to face you on there. So Gorons, Gorons are better on the high ground and coming down. They could, they'd be a good, like, cavalry-style enemy. Um, but without the skill and combat, I don't think they manage it. I think the Gerudu take the cake. Mainly because they're actually uh, they're actually skilled at what they do and trained to fight. <laughs> All right, how do we continue to learn stuff? Um, I gotta meet him down there by the two fires. There's a cabin. Yeah, and then the um, the guru to take the Hylians. Maybe. <laughs> the Gerudu maybe take the Hylians. Now, here's the thing. If it were... There's one group that I, I didn't talk about that belong to the Hylians that oh. are more difficult to deal with. The Sheikah. The Sheikah. Stealth. They've got really good stealth. As well, well as technology. Not, yeah, the technological advantage that the Hylians would have over the Gerudu might overpower them. Especially if they can get those Guardians working pro properly. Those guardians would rip everybody apart. But cool. Chica Tech might be what what eventually wins. So I think overall Hylians. <laughs> now wait, you're, there's Gerudu, one group that you're those, missing. Against those groups, the Hylians probably are. It's going to be a protracted fight. No, there's group one group that, that you're missing that might provide a technological advantage, depending on who who they're with. The Zonai. The Zonai? Uh, Zonai aren't even in, in, uh, in this because they no longer have a Hyrule. Well, I'm pretty sure they're all dead. That's why. See, if Hylians had a hold of the Divine Beasts as well. I, I'm completely negating the Divine Beasts and Guardians. I'm I'm, I'm like, because those are ancient Sheikah tech. Um, and they were all take. they seem like they've been taken apart. So I'm uh. going, okay. Um, I mean, it, it is a, it is not quite a non-factor. But the fact that they have enough tech that they've reverse to engineered that. to build like the Pura Pad, um, <laughs> I do think, I think it's a protracted fight. I don't know if the Hy Hyruleans actually come and fight. I think, I think between Gerudu and Hylian, um, it is a stalemate. I think the two have a stalemate. Against the other three races, oh yeah, they annihilate them. The Ger the Gerudo annihilate them. They have a tougher time with Gorons, but they eventually bring them down. Um, but they annihilate the Rito. They annihilate the Zo Zora. Um, and it is just a knockout, drag out fight the, between the. Uh, I don't necessarily remember where the cave is. Yeah, it's just a drag out fight between the Hylians and the uh, Gerudu. And I think we've seen this before, because I think um I think in every every like if we take Ocarina of Time, there was a civil war and the Gerudu eventually swear even if they're lying, swear loyalty to the Hyrule royal family. I think I think I think the issue is it turns to a war of attrition. I do not think the Gerudo last in a war of attrition. 
I don't think they have the numbers. And the fact that they're kind of limited when it comes to uh, what is it called? They're, as far as numbers, they're, they don't reproduce very well. They have to utilize uh, outside forces, and if the Hylians are at war, um, you've eliminated uh, in a war of attrition, if it essentially goes longer than five years, you annihilate the Gerudo. Without the f- Hylians... Because the Hylians can, the Hylians can re- replenish their numbers. Yeah, but without the Hylians... Um, how would the Gerudo... Mainly because uh, I mean you think about it the Gerudo are uh, depend on Hylians to reproduce pretty much. Pretty much yeah. I mean there's only what one Gerudo one born Gerudo every male every hundred years. Where do they get their food from the desert? Cactuses. They also um, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about food supplies. That's the other issue. Um, I, they probably hunt Muldugas. You could definitely hunt down Muldugas. They'd, yeah, I could see them. In all ru- ru- reality, a Muldugo would provide a plentiful amount of food. Not going to grab the bomb flower? Um... Hunting, I I think they do hunt, mostly. Which does make sense, you know, if they're hunters. You might need soldiers for taking down a Mulduga. You would need soldiers for bringing down a Mulduga. Hey, I can take Muldugas by myself. But I don't think your average Gerudo would take down a Mulduga by themselves. Probably not, but I can. Like, Link can bring down a Mulduga, but that's because he's Link. Okay, back, back to the miniatures game. We got to talk generals and heroes. So the Zora obviously have uh, Mifa and Sidon as their primary heroes. Yeah. The Rito have Teba and Tulin. Uh, no, we're allowing. Oh, we're allowing. Cheap. We're allowing from the past. So Rivali. So no Teba, Rivali. Come on. Dude. It won't let me climb. You're in the middle of a snowstorm. You can still climb in a sto- snowstorm. You can't climb in a rainstorm. You don't slip in snow? No. But you did it in the middle of a fight. <laughs> the thing is, is I was at such an angle that it was not yet... Fr- I couldn't climb, but I couldn't... Run. Oh, run. Okay. It was um, at that angle. Sorry. So, yeah. So, the Zora have uh, Mifa and Sidon. Rito have Rivali and um, Rivali and Teba. Although we kind of need a melee combatant for the ri- Rito. The Rito don't use melee very often. Okay. Uh, they, uh, they have. They do have swords, though. I remember seeing those. Okay. Um, it's like a feather. Gorons like have. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't say Yanobo. No, not Yanobo. He's not a fighter. Um. Um, what's his face? The protection guy. Uh, the divine guy. I can't remember his name. As you can tell, I'm not too fond of the Gorons. (laughs) I gotta figure out where this cave is. Daruk, thank you. Daruk. So they, they've, the Gorons have Daruk as their hero. Um, they probably need another one. There's probably somebody... Somebody else, um, or they just have one. Each each faction has the uh, their um, champion, and then a generic commander. So you know, it'd just be a Rito commander, a Zora commander, that kind of thing. So, um, in which case, I think if we're going that route, because honestly, I think each one only has one. You'd want all of them to be combat focused. 
uh, for your champion. So it w you'd want Sidon instead of Mifa. You'd want um, Daruk. Uh, you'd want Ravali. And, of course, uh, the Jurudu princess. Not not the young one. The the chieftain. The sa the the champion. Because uh -huh. that... Like the only person that doesn't get the champion are the Rito because her their champion is not combat focused, and that that kind of balances they're pretty it good out. archers. Not Rito, sorry, it's Zora. Yeah, uh, the Zora wouldn't have a combat focused champion. They wouldn't, which is why you do Sidon instead of Mifa. There's supposed, I think there's supposed to be a. It says South Hebra Cave. Okay. Hebra South Summit Cave. Hebra South Summit. Let's see. Where's Hebra? I'm at Hebra South Summit. See? Hebra East Summit. Right right next to me. There's the peak. Now go further over. Hebra South Summit. That cave isn't it. <laughs> Why is that cave not it? I don't know. It's a different cave. But it's somewhere in that area. Okay, went to this with, okay, um, which means it's not going to be this high up. No, it's got to be, it's got to go further down a little bit. Sorry. Um, and then the, uh, so yes, yeah, so they get each get a up. combat focused champion than a generic commander. Uh, like I said, the Gorons, the Gorons would be tanky. The Gorons would have to be low damage, high health enemies, um, units. I think what you do is you allow cross faction, but you may you not cross faction, but cross race. So you like instead of your miniature game being each race, you know you have essentially a monster faction and a human and the uh, the Hyrulean faction. So on, what, what stuff do I have? It's a red Bacoblin boss. Bomb arrows will work. I wanted to take out the entire group. Um, because the monsters have everything. They have, you know, Moldugas. They've got, um, they've got Coblin. They've got Boss Coblin. I they've still got... missed one? Yep. They still have it all, which means got him. if the Hyruleans hat were all together, you could definitely make some interesting armies. You know, you're like, okay, so every army needs a commander. Your commanders will probably work best with the race that you have. So the the Gerudo will work best with uh with See, them. Monsters will eliminate every race if one on one. Yeah, if one on one, they they eliminate every race. They just win. The monsters are so difficult to deal with because they're so versatile. Okay. This is the Hebra South. Hebra South Summit. Yeah. So the Hyrulean faction would have um, have a generic commander for every race and a specialized like champion for every race. Um, and then you would want a um, the monster faction would have uh, have the different bosses as their um, as their champion. Uh, the normal sized bosses. So you have like Phantom Ganon. Um, you could have Ganondorf. Um, a Phantom Ganon could be your generic commander. Uh, you have the various monsters. You know, you're like, okay, Lizalfos, Bacoblin, Moblin. And I'll each one that. essentially can do similar things to one of the races to balance things out. Because part, part of the difficulty will be balancing a game like that. All right. How do we get started? How do we start pitching this game? Now, what would be funny is uh, if after wait a couple weeks and see if Nintendo reaches out. <laughs> but that's the thing. I'm like, an, a Zelda be miniature war game would be fantastic because you have this entire Zelda fan base. Um, if you make it, if you make it well enough, where you're like, okay, ranged weapon and melee weapons, um, 
you don't make a, either one OP over each other. They just have different benefits. You know, ranged weapons one, you can attack at range, but they're going to deal less damage. And then your melee focused characters are going to deal more damage, but, but they've got to clear it. So you're like, okay, as far as terrain goes, you know, you have water, you have rocky terrain, you have maybe buildings. How has he not seen me? <laughs> There's so much that you could do here. Of course, who would you get to uh, be the producer of the game? Who would produce the game? Got a sapphire rod. I am very much disappointed that this isn't already a thing. No, I'm not going to grab the sapphire rod. Because you pull in so many with the Zelda license. I'm so confused. I know I'm in the right area. I just don't know where the cave is. I only know I'm in the right area because And then of course flies. you can just do as far as expansions, you just do game expansions. You're like our wave 1 is Wind Waker. Our wave 1 is Twilight Princess. Our wave 1 like you do your initial release with the uh the Breath of the Wild stuff and then your additional releases are just based on the game. So you're like, okay, here's our Skyward Sword expansion. And then it's like of course you have Link and Zelda and Ganon, but they have so many different iterations. You're like, which Link are you using? Which Zelda are you using? Which Ganon are you using? Really? And then you just change the cards and you're like, up until like the only difference would be armor wise. Um, and you can do special releases for that. This, this could be such a cash cow. <laughs> Because you have 20 years worth of games that you could take inspiration from for your expansions. Okay, these flags are supposed to mark that you're on the right track. You would never run out of content. The game could, even if they did one wave a year or two waves a year, it's like, okay, yeah, we know. We have so many games to pull from. You know, um, what games have the best champions? Well, what games have the best heroes? Well, of course, we pull it from, you know, Ocarina of Time. We pull it from Twilight Princess. We pull it from uh, Skyward Sword, Link Between Time, Between Worlds, or A Link Between Time, or any of them. And it's like, great. There's so much you can do there. There's no way, a, if a game like this were properly developed, that it would fail. And it ha could have so much money in it that all you got to do is build the build the community. Once you release the game, all you got to do is build the community. And a good number of them are built in because everyone grew up on Zelda. Everyone grew up on Zelda, so a war game is would this be... this the cave that I'm looking for? ...would be amazing. It does not look like it. No, there's a shrine in this cave, though. I know that. I'm gonna harp on this that that they that they should be releasing a Zelda war game. The money in it, not to mention like even the people that didn't play the game. If you made the STL files good enough, people would just be like, "Yeah, okay." Look at Star Wars. Yeah, we we just want the miniatures. Okay, I am so lost. Whoa! Run away. Wee, wee. Yeah, I'm completely lost on where I'm going. I legitimately, this entire conversation, I've been trying to find that cave. Wait, 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 wait. You're supposed to be the guide, Jake. I know. You're supposed to know Hyrule. It's been almost a year. It's been almost a year since it I've It would be this quest, so but. much fun. I would play it. I'd put my money in it. Put it on the Zelda forum. Uh, where's our Zelda war game? It'd never get old. You'd you'd be able to play your favorite, your favorite fact, like favorite uh, time period. You're like, oh yeah, I didn't enjoy the new stuff, but but you know, there's always um, the the Ocarina of Time, Link. There's always the Ocarina of Time. Uh, Zelda, chic. It would be chic, and then the monsters could just could be different. J 
Jake, are you Googling it? Maybe. <laughs> Jake's over here cheating. I, can't, I really cannot remember. It's been over a year. Jake's cheating. Crap. Crap. No, <laughs> come back. Oh, I was hoping it was going to crush you. It still might. <laughs> Creating new monsters and technologies. Like, yeah, there's just so much to it. Not to mention the uh, the modding community or the, the STL community would totally be in on it. The terrain for a Zelda game. Oh, man. The terrain for a Zelda game. Okay. So that is the South Hebrew Summit. Pretty sure I had that cave already. There's a cave down there. But you, you said there's supposed to be one up here. That's what I thought, but... Not according to this. Let me read the notes. Okay, two... Head to Hebra South Summit Cave. Shen, its entrance is marked with another bonfire. I didn't read that part. Yeah, its entrance That's is... That's if the bonfire's lit. If it's marked by a bonfire and it's supposed to be something we're supposed to find, it would be lit. Being that high up, wouldn't you see it? Figure I'd see it. Why were you following the flags? Was were they supposed to mark where it's at? I figured the flags were the trail to lead you there. What else would the flags lead you to? Certain death. Yeah, creating new monsters and technology. There's so much there. And that's what I've been getting at, is that there's so much to this Go into game. your map. So I'm thinking... It's supposed to be somewhere down there. Turn around. It's supposed to be somewhere down on that ledge. Back. Unless that... Unless you but kept that's flying That's a monster it? camp. That's just it. That's a monster camp. There's no cave. But according to this, it's supposed to be behind you. I wonder if they made the cave purposely hard to find. They probably did. Marked by a bonfire. There's a fire. I'm sorry, I'm looking for something. I did look it up, though. Well, I want to keep exploring a little bit. Are you going to throw a pine cone at it? I'm going to throw a pine cone at it so that we can get some height. We should have a pine cone. I picked up some pine cones. I picked up pine cones. What happened to our pine cone? There it is. Right there. You have four of them. Yeah. Okay, you said it was supposed to be over here. You know where that flag it, that I showed you was? Yeah, at the top. It's supposed to be just down from there. There's a large ledge. Yeah, they probably did make this cave difficult to to find on purpose. Like, it's supposed to be pretty much right across from the shrine, too, and I have the shrine marked. This is the pinecone thing. No, but if, if you... Well, pinecones don't explode like that. They do get really hot and start popping. Um, if you want something like that, you throw a tumbleweed in the fire. If you want it to explode... Explode? Inhaler cartridge. <laughs> Inhaler cartridge. <laughs> <laughs> Our family learned that. Oh, yeah, that's way. a story. So we went camping with the family in the middle of the woods. Somebody's inhaler ran out, and they're like, well, we don't know what to <laughs> do with it. <laughs> propane. <laughs> and propane accessories. <laughs> Man, propane, like, you're trying. Um, <laughs> that's right next to Tannerite. <laughs> Tannerite. <laughs> Gasoline. 
So yeah, so we went camping with the family. <laughs> um, they they wanted somebody inhaler ran out, and they th- and we were like, ah, we'll just toss it in the fire, you know, Le- like we usually do. It's empty. We'll just throw it away. Well, we we get together. Um, somebody brought back the water supply, uh, because how where we camp we don't have any water anywhere, so you have to. We drive camp down. off the off the road in the woods somewhere. Yeah, you've got to take a. You've got to take a truck down about 20 miles to a ranger station, fill up 35-gallon jugs of water, and bring it back. So go into your map. See where that... Over to this, this way, this way a little bit more, down. That ledge right there. That's where it's supposed to be. It's not a ledge. That's not a ledge, Jake. And it, there's there's the monsters. I know, but this is that's where the cave says it's supposed to be. There it is. Oh, okay, there it is. Legitimately, they marked by a giant bonfire that you stuck inside the cave. No wonder we couldn't find it. Okay, but yeah, so we threw the cartridge in. Um, decided the water arrived, so we all stepped away from the fire, and then the entire <laughs> fireplace exploded. Go boom! Oops. We're like. Well, we're glad we walked away because the fire was going, which means if we would have been around that thing, it would have sent um, flaming wood and ember everywhere. It did anyways. <laughs> but we, it would have been sent to us. So we're like, well, we got lucky. <laughs> and we're like, well, we blew that up. Um, hmm. Of course, there was the, uh, there was the gasoline incident. Which one was that? So our brother, our older brother Josh. Yes, there's one more of us. Uh, he's not yeah. a gamer, sadly. He's not cultured enough. He's a partier. Um, I always feel like you have either partiers or gamers. It's the subclass you choose. But what does even have in it that makes the inhaler explode? Um, compressed. It's a compressed cartridge. Yeah, that's it. It's a compressed cartridge. Any compressed cartridge will, it will explode because the pressure builds up and boom. Um, I mean, you could throw. Let me think. Um, heck, you could technically throw a can of compressed compressed air into a fire and it would blow up. Yeah, anything compressed when it expands, it explodes. So the inhaler exploded. Um, the uh, what was I talking about? The gasoline incident. Yeah, so our brother Josh um, <laughs> was having problems lighting the fire. Oh, was this the styrofoam cup one? The st- <laughs> and he put gasoline in a styrofoam cup? <laughs> now, if you know anything about gasoline and styrofoam, um, gasoline will eat through styrofoam. So he's walking over, and suddenly the uh, it just... It doesn't. It's not that it falls apart, but it um, it disintegrates. It disintegrated, and all the gas fell out. And we're like, I oh, know I got gas on the ground. There's just so much dumb stuff, you know. We've there's all the times we've almost died up there. Man, it's better than your friend peppering us. Oh yeah, getting peppered by a shotgun. Yeah, we all got peppered by a shotgun. Um, yeah. we took Chris up. Um, if you're, if you've been on our, if you've seen us for a long time, also he's gonna covered explode. in gas near fire. It doesn't look like Darth Vader. Does he? He does not look like Darth Vader. Um, he didn't get close enough to the fire to uh look like for to actually catch fire. But it's like, you know, you probably should be using plastic for that. And it's not the first time he's lit himself on fire. It is not the first time he's set himself on fire. He's done it twice, two other times. <laughs> um, this is the time he. But back to what I was discussing. Um, us all getting peppered by the shotgun. So we took our friend Chris up. Um, you 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 take your friend up camping. You know he he's familiar with guns. But um, if you know if you've been on the show long, if you've been around the show long, if I think it was before we started actually live streaming everything. 
Um, Chris was a major, was a little bit of a more major player. Um, at the start. At the start. But um, he decided shotgun. Um, we we went I, out I brought shooting. Up a, I brought up a half-inch Lexan plate, which is pretty close to bulletproof glass at that point. I mean, it can stop the majority of... are we supposed to be Tulin of... before we come out of the cave? That's what I thought. But um, you haven't talked to anybody, and there's several people down there. Right. Every average day in the U.S.? I oh, mean, more people are carrying guns now than ever before. But um, <laughs> we're going up shooting. We're, we're, we're actually very, um, very... We're very safe with our shooting. We we set up the targets. We shoot at about what a hundred yards. Usually about hundred to one hundred and fifty yards. We're, we're rifle shooting. Yeah, we typically do rifles. If we're doing handguns, that's typically about thirty, mm, closer to fifty. But so we're sitting there. We're shooting. Um, I ha we have a big Lexan plate that Jake brought up because we're like. If we shoot it, well, what happens? I was more curious because I know that a 22, uh, 22 is not going to go through it. I'm I was curious on how big of a round... How large of a caliber do you need? And how fast does it have to go? So, for instance, we had 3030s and a 30 odd 6. The 3030s didn't go, th go through. Um, but it we also had did a, not ricochet. We had the... Um, but we also had a... What was it called? Um, we had the AR-15s. A ballistic dummy? Um, honestly, we should probably get a ballistic dummy. It'd be really fun. I think they're too expensive, though. They're really expensive. Oh, yeah. You're looking at, like, let's see here. For a block of ballistics gel, you're looking at about $200. Just for the block of ballistics gel. They're expensive here. I wish they weren't, because the, they actually do tell you a lot when you're shooting. <laughs> Okay, uh, the Lone Cedar on Talanto Peak. Yeah, yeah so that's why we just had a Lexan plate laying around. So we all started shooting it. Um, 3030 didn't go through. Um, it, it put a hole in it and stuck the bullet in it. The air, What was interesting, because we, <laughs> we, ha we have the AR-15s that ha they'll shoot 5.56 five, or 223. And they both went through. They were small, but they were fast enough to go through. And then we decided, well, let's shoot it with the 30 odd six and see what happens. The thing punched a hole through it. <laughs> it was really cool because the 30 odd six went straight through it and it made a large hole and then the plastic melted back together. Yeah. If you're not familiar with firearms, um, you use 30 odd six to hunt elephants. Oh. Grandpa, uh, the, the Grandpa six, used it to shoot for deer hunting. The 30 odd six is he shot elk, not deer. Um, the 30 odd six was the replacement for the elephant gun. Um, it was also used as a uh, an, as an anti armor rifle with full metal jacket. Yeah, back in war. Um, so it's a big gun. Um, <laughs> it kicks like a bugger too. Uh. But the fact that we're like, oh, it actually... You just throw a pine cone at it. Um, but we get finished. We finish shooting, and we there's what's called cleanup. Uh, essentially, you destroy whatever targets you've been shooting at. Usually, you take a shotgun. Um, you take a shotgun, and you go through and clean up whatever's left. Uh... You, you do that at pretty close range. Um, we get out there, and Chris is doing our cleanup. We're gathering the bullet, the casings and everything to make sure we don't leave any of that behind. Anything that's made of paper or anything that's biodegradable, we just blow to bits. Um, it's a whole lot of fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but he goes through, and he's doing the cleanup with the shotgun. And the moron... Legitimately, he's he is. Wait, Chris. Before I call you a moron, because you're not a moron. Uh, let me know if you're in chat. I don't know if he is. I don't think he's in chat. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know if he's in chat. Well, but um, 
he he's not a moron he just doesn't think through everything um he goes up with the shotgun at about probably five yards no way closer than five yards i'm gonna miss probably like no five yards probably about 10 feet so about three yards probably um Used by a farmer. Uh, that, that, that That's like your uh, easy gun. That has no kick. It doesn't make too much noise. Um, oh, yeah. Th those are, we call those plinkers. Plinkers. Yeah, you just take them out and you plink cans with them. They're good for target practice. Cheap ammunition. You'll get good <laughs> practice with them. They're a lot of fun. Um, but he goes through with the shotgun. And five yards. Pro no. Ten no, feet, he, probably. He was probably, let's see. He was probably at most... Maybe 15 feet at most. Yeah, at most five yards. Um, all you can have in the UK. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but he he goes up and he shoots the Lexan plate with a shotgun. Pretty much. Uh, we, we, all knew, we all knew a shotgun would never pierce the Lexan plate. Oh, no. It, it wouldn't. Well, actually, a slug would, but. You have to give life history for it? Really? Huh. That's a lot of background checks for it. Like we gotta do background checks for our firearms. Yeah. I, I've gone gotten mine. I have to I had to go through a background check. Um depending but, on the state, there could be a waiting period. Yeah. Um but he shoots this he shoots this Lexan plate with a shotgun. And uh, of course we're like, okay, we all knew the shotgun would never go through it because it's just a bunch of pellets. We're all far enough away, but it sends ricochets in Every direction. Chris gets hit. Oh, he gets hit hard. I get hit. The only reason I didn't get hurt was because the uh, <laughs> because my headphones in my pocket, my headphone case took it. Um, he hit our grandpa. He hit, hit our grandfather in the hand. Um, <laughs> hit, hit himself in the leg. Dude, he didn't just hit himself with the leg. He peppered himself. The good news is we were all far enough away that the bullets had mostly lost. The pellets had all lost their momentum from the ricochet. So it's like we, we had some cuts. That was it. It's not like it's not like we had a bullet in our arm that we had to dig out. No, it's like, oh, wow, we got hit. We had some bruises. Some of us got it. bruised. Um, there was a cut on our grandfather's hand. But he he peppered us with a shotgun. Um, ours is a 12 gauge. Yeah, we've got, well, actually we have a couple different ones. Um, cause we also do have, I believe a 20 gauge, but we were using the, but uh, we used the 12 gauge. It was the 12 gauge. I think grandpa's is a pump action, right? Yeah. They're all pump action. We don't have any bull pups. Well, I know, I know that I think uncle Mike has a, um, what is it called? Break action. Break action. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's a 12 gauge, uh, it had, I bought the, I bought it. So it was, uh, I bought, uh, I had bought the ammunition. So you I just bought bird. I bought, bird shot. it was just bird shot. So we're like, we're lucky it wasn't buckshot. <laughs> well, I, actually, I don't know if buckshot would go through. Buckshot, I know a slug would. Yeah. A buckshot, buckshot wouldn't go through. It would have ricocheted like that did, but it would have hurt us more severely. I'm glad I went with birdshot. And from then on, you know, we, we always tell the story about how Chris shot us. Hey, I did learn something new. Have you... Uh, He's stating to the side of the glass how come all the pellets didn't go straight into him. Um, so because we had laid it at an angle... It, some of them went up. Some of them went up, some of them went back. He was standing in front of it about five yards, but oh. because it was standing, it wasn't at a perfect angle. We had put it, tried to put it up as straight as we could, but it laid. He got hit. A he, got hit. he got peppered. He, he got peppered. Um, and of course, we were all like, you moron, you shot us. <laughs> you shot yourself, too. You have lost your gun privileges while we're camping <laughs> because you shot us. You cannot be trusted with a firearm. There you go. Now I've got the quest to go all the way up. But it's like, no, and we do take gun safety very seriously. Um, <laughs> the fact that he shot us, we're like, like are you kidding me? <laughs> you, you hunt. You do all these things. 
and somehow you're that unsafe with a gun. Like, you gotta think it through. There's no way! He wasn't thinking. That That is our only answer, is that he wasn't thinking. There's no way he could. Th he thought that the pellets would go through when the 30-odd-6 barely went through. Well, it, well, the 30-odd-6 went through pretty pretty well, actually. It was more was interesting it? that it fused back together behind itself. Yeah. But um, honestly, he would have had more of a chance going through it if he cut the shell before he shot it. Yeah, if he would have cut the shell before he... The pellets may have gone through. And uh, I've I've learned some new things where um, uh, people started using cut shells. They did that back in um, the Great Depression because it was cheaper than buying slugs. Yeah, you cut the shell so that it doesn't spread as much. Well, it actually pretty almost turns it into a slug because it doesn't let the pellets separate at all. It tears the plastic off. Yeah, because normally how is, when a shotgun fires, the the folds on the front um, unfold, and that's why the pellets all go out. You, oh. Okay, I, I think 30 out 6 are allowed in the... If the 30 out 6 are allowed in the UK, probably because it is a hunting gun. Um, oh. Like, the snipers used it um, before they had, like, larger calibers. Like old snipers, we're talking, we're talking World War Two. That's back when they started. They used thirty yachts before they started m moving onwards. Um, but ours are built like built like a like a rifle with scope and everything. It's practic. It has a very long range. You know, we've got it. Uh, we've got it sighted for minimum of a hundred yards. So we we hit pretty hard with that thing. Um, but it's like. Also, cutting it. That, that's actually pretty smart, cutting, cutting. Back to the shotgun shell. Yeah, so it unfolds. When you fire, the gunpowder ignites. There's a the top it. is just folded in on itself. And so when the pressure hits, it all unfolds and the pellets go out individually, which is why it fires so many pellets. If you cut the top, uh, if you cut the shell, what it sounds like is instead of unfolding, it's easier just to rip that entire front of the shell off. Um, and turn it into a slug. So, well, you're also missing the fact that there's a wad behind the... So you've got your pow your primer, your powder, your wad, and all your pellets go into that wad. Um, and then everything gets capped off at the end. You're cutting it right around that wad, so that way... So you cut it pretty close to in half, and that way it tears the outside of the plastic shell off and turns it into a pretty much a slug. It hits similar to a slug. Um, it, it was considered the poor man's slug because in when it was uh, oh, they would use them in the Great Depression as a slug because ammunition was so expensive. But it was kind of interesting to learn about. Um, now there's so many different types of uh, shotgun ammunition that, I mean, companies have come out with uh, some new non-lethal options for uh, that basically use a um, wireless taser system. So you shoot them, and it's just a dart that hits them that has a charge and it just shocks them. Personally, I'm more <laughs> fond of the net shell, the drone killer shell. Like I said, th they've come out with so many different... Shotgun shells are just so versatile that it's like the company's like, yeah, we've got shotguns. Um, we know how to, like, if we're going to make a shell, we're going to make a shell. Um, so you've got, like I said, you've got the... Um, you've got things like the... Uh, the beanbag round, things like breaching rounds, breaching rounds, things that um, weren't designed to be shot at some people. Slugs kind of look like normal bullets with some grooves. Yeah, it's essentially a bullet designed to go into a shotgun. 
And it's just called a slug because of how big they are. Yeah, it's pretty much designed. Let's see here. How would I describe it? How would you describe a slug? Um, it's a big bullet. I mean... It, Don't is, worry, man. We're is. trying to get you on the uh, UK watch list. <laughs> Don't mind if MI6 shows up. Especially if uh, it sounds like you just Googled different types of shells, so uh, don't worry, you know. The government. <laughs> it's the government. Um, but yeah, so like the different non-lethal shells. I'm so glad that there's so many different non-lethal shells. Oh, I, I love some of the non-lethal stuff that they've come out with. I mean, they even have a... Um, CO2 handgun that is legitimately it is a non-lethal you can either load it with a basically a paintball full of pepper spray <laughs> <laughs> oh, or man. a rubber pellet which leaves a nasty bruise and can crack some ribs but no worries <laughs> you're not American and we understand it <laughs> like we're like guns we're, we're all about our guns <laughs> Especially with how things have been going, yeah. Especially with how things have been rolling in the U.S. recently, where like how many firearms all, and all riots and yeah. stuff like that, yeah. How much violence is going on? We're like firearms all the way. There's a lot of people that decide to start carrying after there, all the riots yeah. and There's everything. There's a reason it's called the Great Equalizer. Yeah, I mean, um, but yeah, the. Uh, <laughs> The fact that there are like non-lethal stuff. Um, you talked about the taser. You, I, I like the paintball. Sh I like the paintball filled with a pepper spray. Yeah, it's actually, and um, they're actually cheaper than most firearms. It's a really good non-lethal option. It would be a everywhere would be a very different place with guns. <laughs> hey, you guys might actually have free speech if you have firearms. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard about hate speech laws. But yeah, uh, I'm trying to think. I've got. I mean, the, some of the areas that we go to here in Salt Lake aren't the best, and I, I carry. I'll carry to those places because they're scary. Oh yeah, we can't say a lot here. We can say anything that we want. It's just we might get the wrath of, wo of the woke mob. <laughs> but they're not armed. <laughs> it got a point there. We can be as insulting as we want. That's what matters. Like, like I I'm not going to get into it because this is getting back into the political stuff. Guns are fun. Um, One thing that I, I also understand like why people don't want guns. Um, there's a yeah, they only live on Twitter. They're not here on Twitch. They can't shoot. <laughs> they can, but it? it's mostly themselves. S uh, Smith oh, and Weston. Dark. <laughs> Smith and Weston actually came out with a um, 20 gauge revolver. <laughs> a 20 gauge revolver. <laughs> Basically, it uses the 20 gauge shotgun shells, and it's a revolver. <laughs> <laughs> but you can load it with several different types of ammunition. So you could load it with, um, they have different rounds for it to the point where you're, I think you can, I think it's also part of their, um, what is it called? Their 50, uh, technically it could also fit a, a 50 caliber can technically fit into it too. Ooh. I think, but the, you can fit, I think, it, they have adapters, so you can fit up to, I think, like... Who doesn't want to conceal a 20 gauge? <laughs> right? <laughs> well, it's like, apparently, you can get a... Sim uh, I'm actually going to find a picture. I'm trying to remember what it's called. You'll have to look it up. Look up Smith & Weston Revolver uh, 20 gauge shotgun shell. That'll tell Wait, you I'm actually is. looking up something else. What, so this, Smith and Wesson makes a uh, uh, a fifty cal. 
Oh, the, the Smith, Smith and Wesson 500. Those are great. <laughs> but even better than that. What, the snub nose or the... <laughs> did you look up the snub nose or did you look up the extended barrel? I looked up the snub nose. The extended barrel's better. Because <laughs> you can get a 25 inch... A 25 inch barrel? Pretty much turning it into a rifle. Actually, I think under uh, U.S. laws, it would be considered a rifle at that point. Oh, boo. <laughs> boo. With a pistol grip. <laughs> With a pistol grip. <laughs> boo, no. That's dumb. They classify it as a rifle. So this is a 50 cal. Bad image. Really bad image. But, yeah, Smith, Smith & Wesson makes a 50 cal revolver snub nose. <laughs> you want to break your wrist, <laughs> you shoot one of those. <laughs> Actually, people have broken their wrist with that. <laughs> because, so, okay. Handguns. Um, the length of the barrel has a counterweight on it. Because when you fire, the kick is going to come up. And if you're firing properly, the gun is out in front of you. Which means when the kick comes up, if you're... <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> well, what would actually happen is the it would kick up and it'd smack you in the face. Um, so the, a long barrel, you have a counterweight, so the gun, the, the gun goes back instead of up. Because when it goes up, it tries to go up, and most people will, most people who know what they're doing, they'll just let their whole arm go. <laughs> um, it, or they're holding with two, and they'll just let it come back. Um, somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, <laughs> so it can blow two heads off. <laughs> yes. Hey. Well, no, no, it leaves a nice big <laughs> dent on your forehead. <laughs> so, and as far as, there, there is two different types of 50 calibers. You have the pistol version or the revolver version that is legitimately a cartridge, probably about that long and maybe about that big. It's not too big. It's not extreme. It's big for a bullet, but it's not massive. But then you have the 50 BMG that is absolutely massive. And that is a rifle round. This pistol shoots the smaller, you can get them up to like 500 grain. And uh, grain is the amount of gunpowder that's in the <laughs> cartridge, that's in the bullet itself. So as you get more grain, higher velocity, um, a lot more kick. So a 50. A 50 handgun, though, is absurd because <laughs> why would you ever need a 50 handgun? Like, that. I have the answer. It's for when somebody breaks into your house and is hiding behind the refrigerator. <laughs> 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 and, the, and there's also a reason for the 50 BMG. It's for when somebody breaks into your neighbor's house and is hiding behind the refrigerator. Well, I know that a, I know that a, a 50 BMG is an anti tank rifle. Well, I mean, full metal jacket, um, uh, what or an HE round? It'll, it's it's an anti tank. I call it the freedom round. The freedom round. <laughs> it is the freedom caliber. <laughs> Fifty cal is the freedom caliber. I will take no other answer for the freedom caliber, except for maybe the forty-five. I will, I will take forty-five as an acceptable answer for the freedom round. <laughs> and I say fifty BMG. Fifty grams. So fifty. Um, it's the caliber. So the fifty caliber. So bullets are measured in calibers. Okay. Uh, which is I believe it's. Um. Well, that sounds good. Sorry, I have to remember what calibers are actually referencing to. Um. It is, so caliber is the nominal internal, it's the diameter of the
barrel of the gun. Yeah. Of the inside of the gun. So when you say a 50, what you're saying is a 50 caliber, which is, that's the which barrel. Typically, they're also typically measured in millimeters. Too. No, they're not. They're, they are... Uh, Depending on where the firearm's from. So uh, typically German makes are, ma are millimeters. So like... Uh, so a 22 rimfire, like the 22 caliber, um, is designed, is ac firearms such as a 30 caliber, which would accommodate any cartridges, up using through 0.3 inches. So caliber is point is the diameter um, in inches. So when we say a 50 cal, um, a 50 caliber is half an inch diameter barrel. America lore. Yes, you're getting intense America lore. Um, <laughs> th this is the kind of um, this is the kind of firearms. Um, this is the kind of firearms information that you get when you take the American subclass. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> no, when you take the American class. Um, depending on your subclass, you might get some additional lore. Um, you know. You know, you might be able to spot when somebody's uh, carrying. But, yeah, the, the caliber is just the diameter of the gun. Now, normally, the, di the higher the diameter, the more gunpowder you need to fire the bullet. Um, tooling the sniper, man. Um, so when we say 50 BMG um, or a 50, what we're referring to is a 50 cal, a 50 caliber. So I, I but know there's a difference between the BMG and the actual and the Magnum. What is the BMG? Bra the 50 caliber Browning machine gun. But the round is it, the diameter of the barrel is still 50. Also known as the oh oh hey it has a, it has a millimeter. So it is the uh, 12 7 by 99 millimeter NATO. Also called the 50 Browning. Um, so it is, it is twelve point seven millimeters. Yep. Right. Twelve point seven millimeter caliber. Um, it was originally designed for heavy machine guns. So that specific <laughs> round, from what I've experienced so far, I get why you're blowing things up with ice beams. <laughs> it is so much fun. <laughs> it is. If you ever come to America, the one of the first things you need to do is, of course, go to a gun range. Yeah. Take a couple hundred bucks, go to a gun range. Can those move? You'll have so much fun. It's ridiculous. Like, also sporting. Like, hunting, like, not hunting, but shooting for sport is so much fun. Not only that, but a lot of it, even here in the U.S., a lot of our, a lot of the stuff that gets put out in the news isn't, isn't accurate. The streets are already practically a gun range, depending on your city. Yeah, I mean, you so look at... So if you live in a safer city, um, you don't have to worry about it. The, I, honestly, the the firearms... Uh, the, the firearms violence rate is a little bit overblown, I believe. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, um, that's because they can't take the country as a whole. Um, when you start... Chicago, yes. So it's individual cities. You got to understand that the United States, the size of the United States. Oh, uh, a lot of people don't realize how large the U.S. is. Um, and so when you're talking, when you take, um, when you try to take the gun information for the, for the entire U.S., um, it very much nullifies that states have very different laws. And oh my lord, I'm being consumed by the void again. Something's wrong with our. Uh, Something's wrong with our uh, chroma key again. I'll just slightly adjust it so that my eyes are not being taken. So the issue is I've got green eyes. <laughs> I've got green eyes, which means sometimes <laughs> the camera... green screen does not work when you have green eyes. Yeah, so. sometimes the green screen's like green in his eyes. <laughs> That's Let's actually... Make it snow in his eyes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so the size of the U.S. is so big. It's like, you know, you can drive for 12 hours and still be in Texas. Uh, try again. Or, you know. there's If you're, depending on how you drive in Texas, 
you could be driving for almost 16 hours. Well, let's take Utah, for example. It is an eight hour drive from Salt Lake City to uh, Las Vegas. I thought it was six. It's eight. It's six to Mesquite. Huh. So it's like our, it is ridiculous how big the place is. I took a train from Salt Lake to Chicago. That was a 30 hour trip. 20 hours from Salt Lake to Chicago if you were driving at 80 miles an hour. No traffic. So the place is just huge. So with that many people, and it's got a population of like 300 million, I think. How many UKs can you fit in Texas? Uh, <laughs> I honestly am not entirely sure. There's got to be a map somewhere where I can find like the size of Texas versus the UK. And that's where it does. So majority of the US, like we typically, if we are going to, let's see, if we're gonna tell somebody, hey, we're going here, we do not do our measurement by distance. We use it by miles, uh, no, not miles. We, we do use it, it by time. time. Like we'll go. Oh yeah, we're going. We're gonna go to. Let's just continue with Vegas. We're gonna go to Vegas. We're gonna leave at six a.m. And they go, okay. Well, we'll leave at this time. And we go, okay. You should be down there at about this time. So that's we we no longer me we stop measuring by. There it is. There's the. Uh... For reference, there's Texas versus the UK. <laughs> <laughs> That's just Texas, our second largest state. Yeah, I think Alaska's got the Texas beat. <laughs> uh, Utah versus UK size. Let me see if I can... So it's easier to compare the, the US. I mean... Oh, so yeah. So you take up, like... The UK's maybe, the, like... Just the mainland is about the size of Utah, like oh, the size the of uh, Utah and Idaho, but it it's huge. So, is there any way I can like zoom like, out? Legitimately, two states. I would love to. You know what? Why don't you just set it up as a window? Give me a second. I, I'm actually, I'm I'm pulling this up real quick. You set it. Yeah, put it as a window. Here it is. That's the UK versus the US. <laughs> and a lot of people don't look this up. Like, yeah, so when you're taking that kind of thing, it is significantly bigger. And so like comparing the US to any one country, we're, we're, we're 50 countries. And so any sort of like comparison for gun crime rate the fact that it's so low everybody i know everybody knows it's big everyone's like the u.s is big no you you, you don't realize we're the size of a continent like of europe we're, we're about the size <laughs> of europe i mean legitimately you uh, if the u.s were to and that doesn't canada or alaska yeah that map didn't include alaska <laughs> Let me see. Here, I found one. So Alaska is by far our biggest state. Yeah, and in size, yes. In population, no. Alaska is by far the biggest state. Um, and here's your comparison for Alaska versus the UK. Where's the UK? That little thing in the middle. <laughs> I thought that was a, um, a small. Um, I thought that was one of the dis not districts. Um, one of the uh, the political lines. <laughs> so yeah, so the place is huge. You ever go through Alaska? Not including more northern. Yeah, 
Um, let's see. U.S. versus Europe size. Let's see if I can find that. So, yeah, disregarding some of the northern countries. Um, we also have... The issue is we also don't have, like, the Mediterranean or anything like that breaking up our land. It is pure landmass across the entire thing. Oh! No! Oh, I almost made it. You could have rewound. I could have? I didn't know that. Yeah, disregarding some of the northern... The northern areas, um... The U.S. is... Actually, let's see. The U.S. has... The Europe has an area of 10,000, uh... 10,100... 10, sorry, 10 million, 180,000 kilometers. Sorry, we're not speaking freedom, so I got confused. Um, <laughs> the U.S. has an area of 9,833,520. So technically, Europe is a slightly little bit bigger. bigger. The issue also is... And that's... I blame maps. So, so the biggest thing is maps. So maps are never to scale. Um, for instance... Alaska looks really small on a world map. And that's because it's in as you get further and further north, they skew the um they skew the size of different things. And so you uh as they skew those map sizes, you're like it doesn't look as big as it actually is. Not to mention, we're, we're very much a automobile-based country. So, like, our train systems are very limited. I really hate our train systems. So, our train systems are really good. I, we just need more of them. Like, Amtrak? Mm, I loved my Amtrak trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that works. Oh, wow. I can't believe that actually worked and right? did that. That should not have done that. That ice should have hit you and hurt you. <laughs> Skewed me. Turned me into a shish kebab. <laughs> Skewed, yeah. But, yeah, so I'm, like, I'm very much of the mind that everybody, one, disregards how big the U.S. is, disregards our population. What is our population versus Europe's? Actually, I think Europe might have a little bit larger of a population. Oh, okay. So, the population of EU25 um, is half of the population of the U.S. Oh. <laughs> population of California is 39.5 million. So, like, one state has the population of uh, Poland. So, like, we have the population of Europe. That really explains the, um... No, we whole... don't... We don't have to go abroad for vacation. Um, no. We just go to another state. It's like another country. Yeah. Um, that's legitimately the whole thing of... It's... We are legitimately 50... Like, 50 war tribes in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great description. We're 50 war tribes in a trench coat. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but that's on the war side. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we are. <laughs> but there's a reason why uh, people in the U.S. they say we're not well traveled, and we're we're not we're not well traveled, and because we have such a big country, we don't need to. If we went, we don't need to backpack Europe when we can backpack the U.S. <laughs> I mean, we could go. Utah, Idaho, uh, and there's different Montana. things. You know, we're in Utah, we have su such great national parks. You want potatoes? <laughs> you go to Idaho. <coughs> you want potatoes? You go to Idaho. Um, that's about all that's in that state is potatoes and uh, hills. And hills. I just ticked off everybody in Idaho because that that's all Idaho is. It's it's like barren. There's nothing there. Um, so I yeah. made it this time. Go to, go to Idaho for potatoes. Um, Utah, Colorado is the weed place. 
You get all your marijuana in Cal Colorado. Yeah, that's accurate. Or Nevada. Or Nevada. Uh, Nevada, you're there for Vegas. Nevada has like two cities, uh, Vegas and Reno. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Vegas and Reno, that's the only place in that state. The rest of it is owned by the government. And no, actually, you'd be surprised on how much territory on the uh, west coast is owned by the government. Yeah, majority of of it is considered federal land. Um, the reason why Nevada nobody lives in Nevada is because that's where we tested the atomic bombs. Yeah. And the nuclear weapons that we developed. Uh, I live in London, y'all. Well, where the most obvious obnoxious tourist is? Is it the say? Wait. And I lived in that, y'all. You're, the, it depends on the tourists. So British people are n in the UK. People from the United Kingdom, I don't know what part of the UK you are. I shouldn't be calling you British because you might be Welsh or, or, uh, or Irish or anything from the UK. Um, I want to say you guys are... Tourists aren't the most obnoxious people in general. Um, you, you've also got to understand the kind of the difference between cultures in the U.S. A good amount of the U.S., our export, our primary, the United States primary export is culture. He's got a freaking bomb. <laughs> he just threw a bomb at me. Um, the U.S. primary export is culture. So anybody coming over to experience that culture we're more than happy about. Um, I don't find pe most people... Run away. <laughs> honestly, be living in the U.S., we don't experience tourists too much because tourists, being from Utah, tourists don't come to Utah. Mm -mm. Tourists go to the big places. They go to New York. They go to California. They want to see Hollywood. They want to see that kind of thing. Um, you come to Utah when you want to go skiing. So as long as you're away from the ski resorts, you're good. Some people want to see our our national forest, but not as much as as other places. So we don't experience tourists nearly as much. Um, as far as being obnoxious, tourists, I don't find them obnoxious at all. Um, for us, the most I experience that I've had, like having to deal with tourists, is like kind of explaining how our city is laid out. Oh, there's my green eyes taking away again. Um, <laughs> um, explaining kind of how the city's laid out. That's another problem with the U.S. The cities are not all laid out the same. No. I mean, Utah has actually one of the better systems. So some cities, they just literally built their city. as like, as you're building, um, you move and um, you just build roads. And it's like, no, no, no. Some, some states, you need to plan it. Yeah. So we live in a very opposite where most people are um, are citizens. Well, not necessarily, not necessarily citizens, but because, you know, there's people here that, that are just here on visas. We have a very good college town in our area. So people are here for something. Uh, if we went to Park City, we'd experience a lot more. Um, if we took the half an hour drive up the mountain to see Park City, but... The tourists are mostly separated for us. We are concerned because we're supposed to be getting the Olympics back in about 10 years. Which is a mess for Utah because our we have to essentially redo our entire uh, rail, our entire like uh, city rail structure for it. So, yeah. Which um, is needed. Tourists are either coming to Utah for events. Uh, we have like the set, one of the larger like Utah has a very large nerd, um, nerd population. We have, we have like a card shop on every corner. So we're in nerd heaven. Um, we have Comic-Con. We've got so many conventions that go on for these. And of course, it, we're like, we're just kind of used to it at this point. Being with so many people doing business, we're like, people travel short term. We'll help them get around Utah. Most people don't get lawsuit and everything's well structured That's in Utah. That's just because everything's a grid in Utah. Yeah. We, we built like the Romans. Grids. 
grids all the way. Our entire, like, main, the main, the capital of Utah is built on a grid. Unfortunately, the capital is not the grid. It is the Mormon church. They're the ones that started the state, so they're the ones that get to be zero, zero on our grid. Yeah. Not a lot there. That here, everyone is obsessed. Yeah. So there's a... That gangster has lost its appeal in the U.S. a lot. Well, that because a lot of... Uh, so for the U.S., gangster... Gangsters are legitimately actual gang members, typically. And they aren't nice gangs, usually. So that's where that's where most of our... Uh, yeah, our, our gangs in the U.S., um, we're, we're not out, like, we're not racketeering. We're not doing any of that. Ever since the, yeah, ever since the, um, the Rico busts of the mafias, um, the gangs have been very disorganized. So... Um, when the mafias were taken down uh, by our government, because of taxes, because taxes, <laughs> because taxes, I can't believe it's it's taxes that beat the mafia. <laughs> no tea angles here. <laughs> like legitimately, as far as the mob bosses, we could not get them with anything else but taxes. But the new, all the gangs, sorry, I'm just taking a look, seeing what's going on with my thing. Um, but gangs have lost their appeal because we're like, no, they're just criminals now. Uh-huh. They're, they're just criminals. And if you go down that gang lifestyle, you've got about an 84% chance that you're not going to get rich or famous. You're not going to do anything of that. You're going to lie dead on the street because you pulled a knife on some guy and he shot you. Uh-huh. Uh, that's the thing with the U.S. is especially because such a large group of our population does carry um depending on where you're at nobody wants to actually pull their firearm because they know a lot of areas especially the ones that prefer using their guns they know as soon as they pull theirs they're gonna have 10 pointed back at them uh, yeah so like and gangs have a a larger problem here because Racketeering's harder. Um, the various m enterprises that gangs would engage in is very difficult. So the drug trade is very prevalent. Um, you're not, like I said, you're not, you're not racketeering for protection money. Um, all they are are they're selling drugs, and they're um, they're selling drugs and maybe people. Yeah, human trafficking is is big, and then also as far as. That's also where a lot of our, uh, most of our gun, gun violence is actually in, gang, is part of gang yeah, violence. Yeah, majority, majority of the gun violence in Utah are the leftover gang violence. Not just in Utah. Throughout Not in the Utah, US. sorry, in the U.S. So once you, once you take out gang violence and suicide, our gun violence rate is very low. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, gangster is not a, uh, you want to be gangster. It's like, no, 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 no. You guys don't understand. You know, the people who want to be gangster are the people that don't understand what they are. Or teenagers. So pretty much are teenagers. The, and... the, young po the young teenage population, they just don't understand what, um, what the gangs are, what they represented originally in the U.S. And by the time they're out of high school, they figure it out. Because yeah. um, we, uh, we've had, I mean... Uh, for a lot of the gangs in the U.S., to become part of the gang, you have to kill somebody. You have to commit a serious act of violence. And so it's very much like you don't want to be a part of it, one, because of that. Um, the other bit is it's like, yeah, but most of these, the gangs in the U.S. are not rich. The gangsters in the U.S. are not rich. They're not, they're not glorious, nothing like that anymore. You're, you're, uh, the, the gangsters live alongside the dregs of society because their primary income is, um, is prostitution and drugs and drugs. So it's the dregs of society. They do. They really do. Um, 
Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, you, you, yours got uh, held for swearing. Um, uh, I'll, give me just a second. I'll let that there. I don't care. Um, <laughs> we're, this is a, this is a, this is a adult stream. You know, you, you'll, I you'll, mean, that is, that is what the U S likes to say. Yeah. Screw around, find out. out. Fuck around, find out. I mean, it, the, I mean, you think about it, that's pretty much the epitome of Texas. <laughs> I mean, probably the two scariest states as far as just from what you hear from them is Florida and Texas. Florida is just crazy because it's the swamp people. <laughs> and Texas, I mean, they've got an arsenal in their basement. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, all these wannabe gangsters, they're like, okay, they, they, they want to, they're essentially, they're trying to get cred to be, um, to be, uh, do you guys love swearing? Um, I, I believe it has its place. Yeah. There's some points to swearing, uh, it gets the point across, but when... You use it like most of our society of every other word. It at that point it loses all meaning. That's the issue. Is I, I do believe like a profanity should be used to really punctuate and have meaning in what you're talking about. If you're using it every other word, you well one you're you're it doesn't mean anything anymore. You and it doesn't sound as so. If you've ever been around somebody that doesn't swear. As soon as they swear from the first time, you either think it's funny or terrifying, depending on the context. Yeah, it's either funny or terrifying, depending on context. And usually you're shocked. You're like, what? Yeah. Did I hear that right? And so those people that go around swearing, it's like... you. I can't take you seriously when you mean your swear versus when you don't. There are still five locks securing So when I can't I can't be sure of which it is, I don't care. To release all five locks and the hatch You've lost the credibility of that. Right, I'm fixing my uh I'm sorting my OBS. Yeah, so definitely use like I prefer to use it uh, sparingly. Uh, what is going on for the impact? Um, my computer's. Oh, my computer just updated the mouse. What is he shooting at? Choo choo. Oh, choo choo. Lack of vocabulary is another issue. Is that a cannon? Yeah. Does it shoot at you? If I remember right, it does. Yeah, a lack of vocabulary is definitely another um, another way to uh, another reason why people swear. Profanity. When we were raised, it was uh, our parents did a very wise way of. Um, making us understand profanity in that a lot of times excessive use of profanity is um, is somebody demonstrating a lack of vocabulary. So when you're demonstrating a lack of vocabulary, you're like, oh, well, now you don't know the best way to um, to explain yourself. Plus, there are way more sinister insults that you can use on somebody without being profane. Right? Like, there are way better ways to break somebody's spirit than calling them um, the F word or dropping... <laughs> There's just better ways, and, and it's usually more devastating. Devastating. 
I still like the Monty Python insults. And that's the thing. We, um, <laughs> you know, I don't think we've ever talked about it, but like Shakespeare was the king of insults. If you've ever read Shakespeare's insults, ooh man, that guy. <laughs> Yeah, the Shakespeare insults are They're just so top elegant. tier. They're elegant. So, um... But, but yeah, insults are better when you use something different. Sure sounds more meaningful. Plus, you learn to describe things in a more accurate way. What? Sorry, not necessarily more accurate, but a more descriptive way. When when you're able to just be more descriptive in your explanations, going it for creates. <laughs> Jake's going for the ruby. Wait, I think we need that. I always got a paddle. Ready? <laughs> um. And because of that, you get some different, some very fun insults. You missed my attack. Uh, I'm trying to think of. Sorry, uh, my brain's fuzzing. I used to do, you know, little things like you turn to somebody, you look at them, and say, "I see the wheels are turning, but the hamster's dead." You're, you're trying. But you're not smart enough to figure it out. I see your gears are grinding. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Call somebody stupid, don't don't call them an idiot. You look at them and you say, You're about as sharp as a butter knife. Yeah. <laughs> sharp as a butter knife. We also talk in hyperbole. Rotten orange. Like, he had some funny ones. Let me see if I can find any. Maybe we'll just... Maybe we'll just go through some of some of the insults and put-downs that he has. Let's see. Um, away, you three-inch fool. Uh, his wit is a, as thick as uh, Tewksbury mustard. I would beat you, but then it'd infect my hands. <laughs> um, more of your conversation would infect my brain. That comes from the winter's t uh, from Curlonius. Um, see the tartness of his face sours grapes. <laughs> yeah, Shakespeare had some good insults. Uh, funny ones. You're like the toad, ugly and venomous. You are unfit for any place but hell. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're as thick as mince. Thou damned and luxurious mountain goat. Coming from Henry V. Calling somebody a mountain goat, that's great. <laughs> See? There are cannons. Leave it to me. 
I don't remember how to take out the cannon. Either. Oof. Thou sodden witted lord, thou hast no more brain than I have in mine elbows. <laughs> Thy tongue out venoms the worms of the Nile. Yeah, there's so many good insults. And usually the creative ways that you use it is just come up with like with insults. It's just come up with a different way to call them stupid. You it's even better if they don't understand that you're calling them stupid, because that makes it even funnier. Proves the point. Exactly. It proves the point to everyone around. Why is my phone buzzing again? Oh, okay. You're banned. I didn't from know the that fairies. would hurt. I didn't think that would hurt. Really? I barely was even on the ground. You're banned from using the fairies. I've only used two. <laughs> and weren't both of them from falling? I think so. <laughs> How many more do we have left? Did you use the last one? I thought there was three. You used the last of my uh, <laughs> fairies. Boy? Boy? How are we... Those are really low power weapons. I know. Watch out for the lasers. <laughs> you didn't shut them off? There's a way to shut them off? I think there is. <laughs> I could have sworn there was a way to shut them off. Not that I know of. They just activated that. That didn't shut them off. No, there, there may not have been. Well, let's make sure we're we've got a clear shot up. Ooh. We almost hit a laser. <laughs> almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. And nuclear weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Can't forget about the nuclear weapons, right? Oh, he's got a nice one. Attach the bow to the switch and throw that the switch. The plan. Take the horn. I don't think that's what you're supposed to do, but it's how we're doing it. It works. There we go. Got it. All right, Tulum, get over here. Two more then? Yeah. I think they're on the other side though. Zania, so go off to that side to access it. Yep. Let me jump off this side. Yeah, yep. this side. Perfect. Let's get uh let's get this done. And then it's one of the best fights in this game. I don't know. I I don't think it's one of the best fights in this game. I think you have to access it from the other one. Yeah, we'll just take the cannon. I usually dodge it. The cannon doesn't really hit anything very often. The cannon needed to be more dangerous. It needed more accuracy. It needed to charge... Shorter charge time. Yeah, if it had a shorter charge time, it was more likely to hit you. The coolest looking fight. It is the coolest looking fight. No doubt about it. It's 
the most cinematic fight. Great fight. Um, honestly, a lot of the fights in this were really good. Oh, hello. Now I need something to go between it. Grab a stick. No, we need something bigger. Sickle. We'll use an icicle. So what we're hoping to get to is that cool fight. Oh. I should have looked up, guys. Was there something up? I didn't see anything upwards. Oh, hey, there's icicles up. I should have just looked up. And then I think the last one is the one underneath. Yeah, I didn't get that one. Let's get that boss fight. fights in the game. One of the most cinematic fights. Because the fight itself no. is kind of boring. Like, mechanically, mechanic-wise, it's kind of boring. There it is. See, that thing needed better aim. It just needed a shorter charge time. This game needs better needed better boss fights. Like, more like Go, not Goma, um, the Queen Gibdo. Because the Queen Gibdo fight was brilliant. Yeah, the Queen Gibdo fight was brilliant. Every other fight in here, I'm like, y you were, I understand what you were trying to do. You know, you're trying to add back the kind of more Zelda element. That, that, these, these bosses all feel like your tra traditional Zelda bosses, which makes them too easy. Depends on the boss. Well, what I'm talking about is like, Queen Goma is probably the only one that doesn't behave like a traditional Zelda boss. I would laugh if you had got the cannon to shoot or it. Or Queen Gibdo, Queen Goma. So, sorry, you know, the existence of a Queen Goma implies that the Gomas we've been fought, the big Goma that we fight is only a peon. It was equal, and that's what they should have been going for. Equally challenging and cinematic. Instead, they focused on cinematics with some of them and challenge on others. Well, they didn't really focus challenge on others. They were all pretty easy. I'm trying to think. The Water Temple actually had an interesting challenge to it, unless you brought the right equipment. Like, the Water Temple favored preparation. Queen Gibdo was, like, equal challenge and cin cinematics. This thing is just pure cinematic. And then the... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, with us with this mask on, it's hilarious. How else are you supposed to fight this? What was it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Like, if they could find a way to make Kolgara more threatening. My question is, is... I have to... Honestly, I, I think that the, um... No offense, I've been talking shit on Kolgara, but I completely forgot how to fight Kolgara. You have to drop down on... Well, actually, I think it flips, or you have to... No, she sends it all out. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot you could technically hurt it that way. That's how we're choosing to fight this thing. No weapons. We're dive bombing this. <laughs> we're dive bombing Kolgara. Woo! Hello, Kolgara. I think we're supposed to dodge with uh, two in. We can get okay I think one interesting way to make this fight more difficult is your stamina should not reset on the um, your stamina should not reset when you reuse it you have to land that would add an interesting difficulty to this fight because it doesn't change anything about the fight itself all it changes is that you actually have to land and like put yourself in a vulnerable position to regen your stamina Give Kulgara some other kind of uh, attack, and yeah, don't don't make your stamina regen when you hit when you refresh your. Uh... I love this music though. Is this seriously the whole fight? Nope. Or is that the halfway point? All right, flashlight round two. <laughs> the music, man. The music makes this game. I mean, now there's tornadoes. <laughs> oh, now we got to deal with tornadoes. I wonder if this would be easier if you put the glide armor on. Oh, uh, this probably would be easier in the glide armor. I'll change to the glide armor. You can do it midair. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, l let me just take my shirt off, put a new one on in the middle of. Woo! I don't know how we're supposed to fight him, but this is how we're fighting him. Oh, you're him. supposed to shoot him with arrows. Oh, you're supposed to shoot him with arrows? Lame. <laughs> what do you mean from below? It's coming from beside us. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't forget about all the islands. Yeah. Yeah, I do think, like, the way to add to this fight is your stamina does not regen. You have to actually land. It creates an interesting, like... Uh, dynamic for the fight where you feel more like um, where the fight ha well it's just more difficulty honestly the having the tornadoes from the beginning would have made it harder Here it comes. you're supposed to shoot it damn it so I know I'm I'm down for the dive bomb method <laughs> oh <laughs> tell something like I'm that fine. happens I'm fine <laughs> to shoot it dive bomb method all the way you better be the projectile, and you better be wearing, like, this skin where you have, like, a nose that looks like it would pierce something. Oh, he's right there. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably be fighting the boss and not interacting with chat, but it's more fun this way. I mean, like that, you could pull up and just shoot it before it... Dude, I would totally use this boss fight music in like D and D or something against a bunch of harpies. Gosh, the glide armor makes this so much easier. I think you missed. 
I, I hit the edge. That's what matters. Dive bombing all the way. Kogera. It's such a cinematic fight. And the music is just top tier for this fight. This, like, action rendition of, um, it, of, I think it's the Wind Waker's theme. No, it's not the Wind Waker's thing. It is the uh, Dragon Roost Island thing. Yeah, it's Dragon Roost Island. Yeah, that's disappointing that they thought we would actually shoot it. <laughs> you don't shoot this thing. You dive bomb it. it. Did look an extravagant piece of jewelry. It's mine now, though. It's my piece of jewelry now. There, we got another heart. Now for the story. Still looks so dumb in the mask. <laughs> now remember, if you don't want spoilers, too late. Yeah, too late for spoilers. <laughs> this is we're in, we're in the story area and we're not skipping. <laughs> served Hyrule's first king. I was a Rito warrior and a sage with control of the wind. Ooh. Where you fight, the winds follow. I would expect nothing less from my descendant. You make me proud. That monster you defeated, the source the of that bird? intense blizzard, I know, was right? summoned by the, the mask. King. Actually, if you wear the mask that you're wearing, uh, Tulin will be wearing his mask. Really? Demon King, secret stone. This is a lot to learn. Does look look ridiculous on us. <laughs> it's with any of the divine beast masks. If you wear them, the sages wear their masks. And the mission our people must accomplish. Years ago. When the kingdom of Hyrule was still young, a great evil, the Demon King, descended on the land. He sought to wipe out anyone who opposed him. But Rauru, the first king of Hyrule, requested my aid, as well as that of five other warriors, to help in the fight. Rauru entrusted us. I just think they shouldn't have used a kid. What? Stones. I know, he's such a lame character. They shouldn't have used a kid. I think they should have used Teva. They, they should have used a legitimate Rito warrior. Teva. Yeah, not just some kid. I, because we also have... Um, we have... We have the prerequisite with Teva. Where it's like, no, no, he's he would have developed this skill after, you know, experiencing his, um, experiencing what he saw with the ghost of, um, uh, Rivali. He'd been like, oh, right, Rivali. It, it would be so much better if it was Teba. Oh, yeah. It's the same thing you could have designed, I think, would be, I know, it would have been so, yeah. Rest of us survived yeah, it wouldn't be some kid. Teva would have been, he, he's trained, he's helped Link before. Um, I think they, if you're going to introduce a new character for any of these quest lines, you get rid of Yunobo. <laughs> you get rid of Yunobo. He was annoying, but his power is useful. Legitimately, the only two sages that I keep out with me when I'm playing online is Tulin and Yunobo. 
mm-hmm. just because their abilities are good. Yeah, they're so their abilities are real. The ability is fine. Doritos help. Change the character. Summon the winds and support right. this hero. It was clear what part the Rito would play. I, I just wish this character was better. It will be an honor to like, defeat the Demon King. I swear. If they made the, the character in any other way, I, I, I don't think it should have been a kid. One, do you know how, um, do you know how irresponsible Sidon ability is so annoying? That's the thing. Um, Sidon has such great, um, uh, Sidon has such, such a great, um, story and everything we're familiar with, and then his ability is terrible. Right. The, Demon King will soon the fact that you have to strength. chase the characters down to use their abilities Tulin, drives me nuts. My brave and then it's like, uh, Tulin constantly getting in the way. I mean, I go to grab something, he walks up, and I trigger the wind and throw it off an edge. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. I really liked how they set up the abilities in Breath of the Wild. Where there were extensions of your already so given abilities, mission. you know, Mifa healed. Why, why isn't um, Sidon's ability should be you trip it and it affects your Link. weapon. This when your weapon so, hits, so it, it applies water. My ancestor gave me such an important right? Mission. It yeah. splashes. And it you to save the world. That would have been so much better than this uh, water shield. We'll, well it also does, when you attack, it does throw water, trouble. but... I can't let that happen. I'll do this. I'll happily take the secret stone. Also, the fact that they use the term secret stone. I'm so disappointed. We, we did some research already and found that the uh, secret stone literally is the translation. Yeah. Sacred stone would make so much better, so much more sense. Like, it's... And why is it a bird tag? Right. Look, check out what I can do. You're my carrier pigeon. (laughs) Yeah, it's literally a. (laughs) Racing pigeon. It is our racing pigeon. already established the sages a long time ago. They could have done so well when it came to the sages. I don't have as much of a problem with the voice because it's meant to be a kid. I have a problem with the dialogue. (laughs) (laughs) Because you can have that childlike voice, but as long as it had solid dialogue... It would be good, and and I think the voice direction is the issue. The beady glowing eyes. <laughs> it stares into your soul. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's head back to the village and tell Dad. Wait, this is supposed to be Taba's kid? Yeah. Then why didn't they just use Taba? I don't know. Maybe they wanted to kill him off. <laughs> and they don't want to leave him fatherless. They were worried about this. <laughs> <laughs> That's my biggest problem about this whole uh, this whole uh, Zelda thing. Zelda has an the Legend of Zelda has a knack for using child soldiers. <laughs> They got it from the Catholic Church. <laughs> Kids Crusade. <laughs> yeah, I, I find it s- like some things are just so annoying in this game. <sighs> it could have been so much better. Tava such a chat as well. <laughs> I know, picture Tava and Sidon. <laughs> we couldn't have two absolute chads with us. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure uh, 
Taba would eat. Taba would eat Sidon? Yes. I'd like to see him try. <laughs> They'd turn him into tuna. <laughs> yeah, Taba's a Chad. They couldn't have two Chads in the group. You know, they might two Chads might usurp Link. <laughs> Knock me over with a feather? What the heck is that supposed to mean? Huh. Huh. Hmm. Oh my gosh. Went from the swallow bow to the eagle bow. Good lord, just let me go. Release me. Release me from this hell. But they had to do the big reveal. <laughs> Alright, I got your stuff. We never have to come back here again. Why is Impa there? <laughs> She's looking for a geoglyph. There's a geoglyph here, so she's looking for it. There's her balloon. Should we go steal it? Can we steal it? No, it looks like yeah, we, Don't worry, we're probably going to be wrapping up pretty soon. We've already been at this for like two and a half hours. I think this is probably a good place for us to wrap up, actually. Right. We'll have to figure out what we're going to do next week. Maybe we can finish getting the uh, glide armor next week. Yeah, we can do some exploring next week. That sounds like a whole lot of fun. You and your diamond blade. Hey. It's a diamond blade. Honestly, you get more value out of just selling the diamonds. We needed it for an emergency, if I remember correctly. You wanted to fight your Lionel. Right, and I decided the diamond blade was probably the best way to do it. Should we be Matt? Should we go for the Master Sword next week? Just depends. How many stamina wheels do we have? If we have the full two, maybe. It is not quite. I think we need, need two, two more. more. My fish back? They should be. It's on. Why didn't that work? Wh because where? you're still in. You're still considered oh. in. <laughs> See, there's your fish. I'm just a random rupee. Deminoka Bass. Little pro yeah, I think this is we're gonna be wrapping up. I think next week we're then gonna go do another quest, or we're gonna uh, we're gonna go grab the uh, Master Sword because the Master Sword is kind of like a mission on its own. Find the dragon, mount it. Find the dragon, mount the dragon. Go for a ride. <laughs> Take it for a ride. <laughs> You know, the funny thing is, I don't think I ever re uh, restored this bridge. I did. So as you leave here, then he should appear. I think. 
because then you're no longer in. Oh yeah, I never, I never actually discovered the lucky clover gazette. Let's see Where here. Where the heck is he? Game's bugging, man. We broke it. You can't summon here. Is it because it's a... Um, oh, this is where you get the froggy armor. Yeah, we'll wrap it up here, I think. Back, also. Oh. Nice. Free milkshakes. Mm, enjoy it. Yeah, we're going to actually be wrapping up here. We've been at it for about two and a half hours already. And we started a little bit early, so it's a good time to wrap up. Plus, you know, it gives us time to clean up the studio a little bit. Oh, yeah. But we will catch you guys next week. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Probably during the week if you want to stop in. I usually stream alone. <laughs> yeah, he streams alone during the week in different games, not just Zelda. I know. I think he was here when I did Ark. <laughs> Ark on Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday, I think, one or the other. I'll have to check my schedule.